Hey everyone, as you can obviously tell, my Advantage 4 post lift is installed and fully operational. This model specifically is the DX9000HD. This is currently the smallest four post lift that Advantage offers. They do have several other models available and I'll post a link in the description below so you can take a look at the available models and specifications for yourself. Now, I think for someone like me with a traditional two car garage, I think that this lift is a perfect fit. It's large enough where the overwhelming majority of vehicles that I potentially be working on or storing will comfortably fit on it, but it's small enough where it does not make the garage feel cramped or claustrophobic. I can comfortably walk around it, and as you can tell, the Raptor still comfortably fits in here in the garage. So now my two car garage has become a three car garage. So. A few months ago, I decided it's time to get a lift. Being a car guy, I've always wanted a lift for maintenance, for storage. It just kind of made sense to finally get one in here. So when I started doing my research, the biggest concern for me was safety for this lift. So I wanted one of these newer style slider lifts or box style lifts, as opposed to the older C-channel or ladder style lifts. This is one piece of square steel tubing this is not welded together the only metal that is removed are the slots for the locks themselves the older c channel design where the bars ride down the center they tend to be a little bit more wobbly from what i've seen and even in person whereas this lift even if i put all my weight on this thing and push this as hard as i can it's rock solid it doesn't move so and that really helped narrow down the competition for what I was looking for. And the other aspect, safety-wise, what I was looking for, ALI certified, the Automotive Lift Institute. Essentially, third-party independent testing that proves that this lift meets or exceeds the automotive industry standard for safety. I know some people don't really care about the ALI certification, but for me, for having this much weight, this high off the ground, that was paramount to me for me or anybody else that might potentially be standing underneath this thing to have an expensive car up here and now potentially an expensive car beneath it, that was my biggest concern. So when I started looking at a few different models, what I found was Advantage by far had the most amount of information on their website. Now everyone's got the basic specifications, your height, your width, your weight capacities, everybody's got that. But Advantage has dozens and dozens of videos on their website that go over all the aspects of this lift in extensive detail. Things like the safety features, the different dimensions of steel that they use throughout this thing, you know, features of it, accessories, videos on how to assemble it if you're putting it together yourself. So there's so much information available. And as I started to really spend hours watching those videos and see this thing in detail, I could tell that this lift was incredibly overbuilt and very well thought out. They really didn't cut any corners on this thing from what I can tell after watching all the videos. The steel on this thing is incredibly heavy. Everything from the base plates that are 12 by 12, 5 eighths, same thing with the top plates. You look at the tabs that hold down the locks on this thing same thing with the locks themselves the axles for the locks and the pulleys are over an inch thick of solid steel there is nothing but super super heavy plating on this that makes this thing incredibly overbuilt and incredibly sturdy so and if you look at the braided steel cable it's a half inch steel cable rated at over twenty two thousand pounds and there's four of them so and even if that cable were to somehow fail when you're operating the lift and bringing it down and you had the lifts locks open, there is another secondary spring-loaded lock inside here. So even if you were had the lifts safeties backed off and somehow this massive steel cable failed, this secondary lock will automatically deploy and slam in to one of the cutouts there and stop the lift from coming down uncontrollably so it's just incredibly well thought out with how much safety aspects there are in this same thing with the automatic wheel stops these things have counterweights on them so if i were to have the ramps on the front wheel stops these basically act as a bridge between the lift and the ramps to come off and when the lift comes off the ground 
these automatically deploy. So if you forget to chalk the wheels of the vehicle or set the parking brake and it wants to roll off, as soon as it lifts off the ground, they will automatically deploy and it will stop the car from accidentally coming off the lift. So like I said, so much safety aspects and just overbuilding that are built into this thing that I'm really impressed with how they put this thing together. So same thing with the pulleys, they're five inch diameter pulleys. And what I like that they did on this is the pulleys use bushings instead of bearings. Now, most people think, well, why wouldn't you want to bury in something like this? Now, this is a very high stress, low speed application. Bearings are typically for high speed application. The problem with bearings is they're susceptible to failure because there's a lot of parts in a bearing versus a bushing is one solid piece of metal. And if you look at very heavy applications where bushings are used, things like earth moving equipment, bulldozers, back hoes, uh, track hoes, those pivot points on that heavy equipment, they use bushings instead of bearings on there. So they're not susceptible to the failure that bearings are in, a, in an application like this. So one thing I also really like that they did with this lift is this has a mechanical style disengagement lock. Now a lot of these lifts will have a pneumatic system. Basically that means you have to have an air compressor hooked up to it to disengage the locks. So by having this as a mechanical, you don't have to worry about having leaks in an air system. All you need to do is raise the lift a little bit to clear the cutouts for the locks and you turn this lever down and all four locks are connected by the linkage and you can bring the lift down so that just is a it's a more simple basic design you don't have to worry about having a leak in the air system and like a lot of lifts you have a real simple hydraulic unit that is all in one piece electric motor at the top the hydraulics in the middle and you have your reservoir and your fluid down below this comes with a 120 volt uh, electric motor from the manufacturer which I like now some people prefer 220 problem is if you're not set up for 220 you got to run it now this thing is only is rated at one and a half horsepower so if you do the conversion it should only draw between about 11 and 12 amps and they recommend using a 20 amp circuit on this thing but you probably would be able to get away with a 15 just because I think it draws well under 15 amps if you do the mathematical conversion for one and a half horsepower to 120 volts so I didn't have to do any additional electrical to get this thing operational. So I was really glad that I did that. And this thing also came with quite a few accessories. Now this being a four post lift, you don't have to bolt it to the ground. Uh, they drill the holes in the base plate. So if you want to bolt it to the ground, you have that option available. But this thing comes with the accessories, specifically the caster kit. So you can move this thing around if you want. That pin in the bottom goes into the pin on the bottom of the lift and when you bring the lift all the way down the side arms will cantilever on these caster kits and you can lift pick the lift up off the ground and move it around now you don't do it with a vehicle on it it's not designed for that kind of weight but when you get the vehicle off it, it's actually pretty easy to move it around it moves easily with one person two makes it a little bit easier to steer it but you can comfortably push this thing with one person so uh, it also came with a jacking tray it's good for 4500 pounds so that slides on here pretty nice i also have four drip trays here I have them all stacked this car doesn't leak so i'm probably going to store those shortly and it comes with some nice well gusseted aluminum ramps so those will go on those automatic uh, wheel stops on the front and, and they will go onto the front of this and they're not too heavy i think they're about 29 or so pounds each and they're very sturdy since I've been using lift, I found that they work very well. So this appears to be a really, really well put together lift. It was well, relatively easy to set up. I did have advantage, drop this off and set it up. It only took them about two hours or so to set this up, the initial setup. But what I also added to this lift was a wing widening kit. Now advantage does not advertise this on their website, but they do uh, sell it because what I found was now this lift, the runway width on this lift is 75 inches. And that's what a lot of these lifts are in that rough neighborhood. Some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. But at 75 inches, you can tell that my Shelby is right at the limit to the point where I, I would almost 
lose sight of the runways when I was backing onto it. Now, it would have probably been fine with 75, but I didn't want to take, take the risk. I wanted to put a widening kit on here. So I had them custom make this for me as they will do if you ask them to do it. Now, if you already have a lift or some other lift and you want to do this yourself, this is a pretty simple add-on. It's basically a quarter inch, four inch by four inch angle iron. So you can get this from a local steel supplier if you wanted to. It's really not a hard thing to do. But this bumped the runway width up from 75 inches to 85 and a half. So as you just saw, my Shelby will comfortably fit on here now. And I have a lot more margin of error now. So I was really concerned about that initially. But these wing widening kits, like I said, you can get it from Advantage or you could possibly make one yourself. Uh, it wouldn't be too hard of a job to do. So it took a little bit longer just to drill those and put them on, but uh, well worth the money. I think it was well worth it. Now, the cost of this lift, the lift itself was $5,200. Now, it might sound expensive. Unfortunately, things are getting really expensive really quickly. I've noticed the, the price of lifts going up very quickly. Uh, pretty much through all the manufacturers. The wing kit was an additional $650 and they charged me $1,400 to deliver it and fully set it up. So all in all, I'm about $7,300 or so into this lift. Now, that might sound kind of expensive at face value, but once you kind of look at how well this thing is put together, extra features I had on, put on and had them put together, I don't think that that was too bad. Now, I know some people will put it together themselves. By all means, if you are comfortable doing that absolutely have at it now why i chose this lift over some of the competition now, i want to be very clear here. i am not here to bash the competition i am here to state the facts from my research of what i found doing these lifts the heavy hitter in the lift world everybody knows is bend pack without a doubt one of the biggest most well-known lift companies out there by far I was looking at, because I wanted a L ALI certified lift with the slider style post. I was looking at their Grand Prix model. Looks like a very beautiful lift from what I can tell. Why I did not go with that model? First and foremost, from what I could tell, the, they were very, very comparable, these two. They wanted $1,000 more for their version of this lift. And when I asked, the, called them and asked them about if they do any sort of price matching or whatnot, they said they weren't even remotely interested in trying to be competitive price-wise. So, okay, fine. And when I started to look at the specifications even in more detail, what I found was their runways are two and a half inches narrower. So without putting a widening kit on their lift, it was only 72 and a half inches, whereas this was 75. And their lift was overall an inch wider than this one. So it was a wider lift with narrower runways. And it was $1,000 more. And they weren't even remotely concerned with trying to price match to be competitive and the lift is a few months out of stock so that's why i did not go with the bent pack do i think it's a good lift yes i probably think it is a very good lift but they didn't want to play ball and it wasn't really you going to be available probably till well into the winter or possibly the spring so that's why i did not go with the Ben pack and another one that I've had a bunch of people ask, why didn't I go with Wildfire? Uh, they seem to make a nice lift, but they're not ALI certified. Their lifts are not ALI certified, and they use bearings instead of bushings in their pulleys. And I've heard people complain about bearing failures on some of those lifts. So that's the main reason I didn't go with the Wildfire over the Advantage lift. So I'm very happy after doing even more research and talking to more people on the various car forums I'm on, I think this was a great choice. The gentleman that bought my Dodge Viper from me turned me onto this company. He's had this lift for several years now and he has nothing but good things to say about it. And from dealing with Advantage, they were very good. Their customer service was good. They call you back in a very timely fashion when you have questions or any issues. And it was just a really, it felt like a really good comp company where they're big enough, where they have the stuff in stock and they have a really good product, but they're small enough when you call them. The people that you speak to, it's not just like a call center. There are people that have worked on these things, have set them up. If you have some sort of intricate questions, they know what they're talking about and they can get into more detailed conversations with you and not have to go get somebody that's experienced and has worked on these before. So I have zero regrets. I'm very, very happy 
that I went with Advantage for my lift. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a lot more content coming on this lift. I wanna talk about all the different dimensions of this garage specifically and how this car fits. I wanna go into more detail with the accessories and the setup of the lift. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.